Hello everybody, uh, welcome to the course on great experiments in psychology. Uh, in the first week of this course, we shall cover the history and genesis of psychology as a science. And today in the first lecture of the first week, we are going to cover the history and origin of psychology. Now, why is it important to study history? History tells us a lot about how we have developed and why we are what we are. So, the early developments in the field of psychology help us understand the nature of psychology in the 21st century as we see it today. How psychology has developed as a science from different roots, we will try and uh, explore them in this lecture today. So, to consider the development of modern psychology, if we go back to its roots, then we see that psychology is covered in this within a span of more than 200, 2000 years apart. So, the origin of the field can be traced to two different periods. So, one would be it is uh, around, around the time of Plato, Aristotle and other Greek philosophers and then we come to the modern philosophers in the 18th and 19th centuries. So, Plato, Aristotle and other Greek philosophers that is during the 5th century BC, they had ideas and speculations about human nature and behavior and their discussions and discourses covered areas of memory, learning, motivation, thoughts, perception and even abnormal behavior. And all these philosophical writings have become the roots of the formal discipline of psychology that we know today. So, we can always say that psychology is one of the oldest disciplines as well as one of the newest sciences. So, since it is it spans over so many years apart. What happened during the 19th century is philosophers started studying human nature by speculating, intuiting and generalizing based on their own experience. Now, we will get to understand that how this transformation came about. So, this is because primarily when the philosophers started using different tools and methods that were already being used in the biological and physical sciences and to explore uh, questions related to human nature. So, in this way psychology distinguished itself from the field of philosophy. Now, researchers came to rely more on carefully controlled observation and experimentation to the study of human nature. We will explore this genesis over time and we will see how the most of the philosophers actually address such questions. So, Kurt Danzinger who is one of the famous uh, historians who covered uh, the spectrum of psychology says that uh, the early philosophical questions or early philosophical conjectures and discourses during the 5th century BC and onwards can be considered the prehistory of modern psychology. And to quote him, he says that history of psychology is limited to the period when psychology recognizably emerges as a disciplinary subject matter and that it is extremely problematical to talk about psychology as having a history before that. And that is why he says of psychology having a prehistory. So, then we talk about the history of psychology. So, coming back to the development of modern psychology, we see that the idea that the methods of that were being used by the physical and phys biological sciences were being applied on mental phenomena. And this uh, these thoughts along with the physiological uh, along with the philosophical thoughts were inculcated to this new branch of science in the 19th century. Now, how did that happen? The philosophers were clearly looking towards an experimental way of approaching the mind. So, so far it was uh, what is mind, now it became like where is the mind? So, how do we tap the mind? Where, what are the areas that we need to uh, experiment on to understand that mind exists. And the physiologists were already uh, tapping on the bodily mechanisms underlying the mental processes. So, there were a lot of there was a lot of experimentation that was going on with the brain and uh, with different parts of the body to understand the behavioral mechanisms as well as to understand other mental processes. 
So, now uh, to understand the philosophical influences on psychology, we start with the mind body problem and that brings us to Rene Descartes, who uh, was there between 1596 and 1650. Now, Descartes most important work for the was for the development of the modern psychology was his attempt to resolve the mind body problem. So, before Descartes, so did we not discuss about the mind body problem? Of course, we did, but the accepted theory was that the interaction between the mind and body is essentially from one direction. So, it was from the mind, the information passed on to the body and the body acted on it. The mind could exert an enormous influence on the body, but the body actually had little effect on the mind and that is how pe people before Descartes thought. Descartes theory contradicted this and he said that the mind influences the body, but the body also exerts a greater influence on the mind than it was previously supposed and that the relationship thus is not unidirectional, but it is a mutual interaction between the mind and the body. Now, this brought about another famous philosopher of the 19th century uh, called Auguste Comte and Auguste Comte brought in with him the philosophy, the theory of positivism. Now, the posit what does positivism say? Positivism suggests that, that that this doctrine recognizes the only natural phenomena or facts that are objectively observable. So, we can actually see that how the development of science is influencing the philosophers. So, people are looking towards um, expressing their thoughts on a more objective way and positivism showed the infused this new spirit in society. Now, Auguste Comte was uh, there between 1798 and 1857 and Comte undertook a systematic survey of all human knowledge. So, he said that the facts that had been determined solely through the methods of science can be considered as facts, rest are all illusions. So, this was how, so, what is objectively seen? What is uh, how do we understand uh, facts? it has to be objectively observed and it is not debatable. So, this is what was Comte's ideas about uh, understanding the human processes and human knowledge. Thereafter came about another uh, major principle that influenced the philosophers of that of the 19th century and this was termed as materialism. The doctrine of materialism considers the facts of the universe to be sufficiently explained in physical terms that is by the existence and nature of matter. So, what exists is tangible, it can be seen and it can it should have physical properties and so we can actually experiment on them. So, as you can well understand the materialistic materialists work on mental processes focused on the physical properties. So, the question of what is mind was being converted to the areas where we tap the mind. So, we were starting to construct ideas about the brain having an important role to play in human processes and mental processes and behavior, human behavior. So, the anatomical and physiological structures of the brain and the functions of the brain also became an important part to under study during the 19th centuries. So, basically during the 18th and 19th century and this also had a major role in the development of psychology. Now, that brought about another doctrine known as empiricism. Now, empiricism suggests that the pursuit of knowledge through the observation of nature and the attribution of all knowledge to experience. So, this as you can understand empiricism has a major influence on psychology primarily in experimental psychology where we focus on observing observations and recording the different experiences by observation. So, this um, is where this is how uh, this uh, uh, theory or the history of psychology had begun to develop. So, we see that it came in the thoughts and ideas were already present from centuries ago, but it was taking a formal shape 
during the 18th and 19th century, where the philosophers and the physiologists and the physicists were coming together. So, it is not about an individual group of science, but it is about everybody coming together to form the a new science to understand human behavior and that is how psychology emerged. Now, getting back to uh, the different uh, domains. So, positivism, materialism and empiricism became the new philosophical foundations and as we understand it brought about the domain of new domain and new uh, science of psychology. So, of these as I mentioned empiricism played a major role especially because it could be related to the growth of the mind and that is how mind would acquire knowledge. So, according to the empiricists the mind grows through the progressive accumulation of sensory experience. As you can understand again the word sensory experience would be tapped by experimentalist to actually identify the uh, specific areas in the human body that were tangible that could be measured and that could be addressed in an experimental in a scientific way. So, this is the era of uh, experimental psychology, this is the era of the development of psychology as a science with an entity of its own development of psychology as a new discipline of science. And this you know we, we got to see several British empiricists then in this time who were really really concerned about uh, the human brain, human mind and its problems. And um, of the most famous one that we can talk of is John Locke and his and he has one of his famous essays was on essay concerning human understanding and it is named an essay concerning human understanding it was written in 1690. And this spoke about the mind how the mind acquires knowledge sensation and reflection. So, we are coming to principal terms in psychology where we will see in the later classes how um, these um, different uh, um, uh, factors have been addressed. Now, and then came in Berkeley or George Berkeley who wrote an essay towards a new theory of vision and this actually uh, see it is some of the biologists coming into the picture, some of the physiologists also who started uh, writing on identifying that what we actually see is not only a part of the perceptual process, but it, it requires some of the major mechanisms of the brain. So, how do we, so we have started linking uh, perception with different experimental uh, different structures and functions of the brain. So, it was becoming more tangible and uh, his work Barclay's work was more on uh, principles of concerning principles of human knowledge. Now, next uh, came in Hartley whose observations on man, his frame, his duty and his expectations is uh, very famous and his work showed. So, this is also uh, the beginning of uh, uh, the theory of behaviorism, where he his work focused on repetition. So, he worked primarily on the associations of contiguity and repetition and later when we study Watson and Skinner, we will see the important role this played in the theory of behaviorism. Then came in uh, James Mill, who spoke about uh, human mind as a machine. So, analysis of the phenomena of the human mind is one of his famous works and here he speaks about mind as a machine. Next is the interesting uh, empiricist uh, one of his uh, who happens to be James Mill's son is John Stuart Mill. And John Stuart Mill in his biography writes a very interest interesting thing. John uh, James Mill believed that uh, if you would uh, train a human being in a certain way, then he would definitely uh, develop certain characteristics. It is just the way you bring up a child. And John Stuart Mill, his son, another empiricist, was brought up in a very strict regimented fashion. And um, he was, um, uh, he, 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 he had uh, 18 hours of work academics and by um, and he had to rigorously undergo a lot of uh, academic work 
and scientific to develop a scientific brain. That is what James Mill thought that you have to give a child that amount of knowledge. So, external knowledge was provided to him and uh, Stuart Mill later complained of a lot of uh, issues uh, and the grievances against his father James Mill and where he thought that uh, the his creative uh, knowledge had not been uh, tapped on. And probably that is one of the reasons why he worked on creative synthesis and which speaks about the proper combining of mental elements and that produces some distinct quality that was not present in the elements themselves. So, the Stuart Mill speaks about an individual developing those elements taking these elements integ integrating them and bringing out something which is very different from the elements themselves and that is where he spoke about the creative synthesis. So, these are the major empiricists uh, that have had a major influence in psychology and now this brings us to the physiological influences of psych on psychology. So, to start off with I will uh, talk about a very interesting case that of David Kinnerbrook. David Kinnebrook uh, was uh, ha held a job that was one of the most boring jobs that one can think of. His work was in a he was lonely, tedious and highly demanding job. Okay, so, he had to live in the same building where he worked and had to be avail available from 7 in the morning until 10 at night, 7 days a week. Mind you, he had no holidays, he had uh, no other entertainment and he would be called on days uh, at other odd times also. So, th there were many other times when he would be called to work even and he had to go from his bedroom. The only perk that he had was that his shoes were shined. So, mm, by uh, that was one of the tokens that he got. So, and he got a tiny salary along with 3 meals a day. Now, this work was in the Royal Observatory in Greenwich in England and this is 1795. So, why is David Kinnebrook's work so important? Why am I talking about him? One of the major reasons is even David Kinnebrook did not know that he would have such a huge influence in the development of psychology as a science. He held this job for one year, 8 months and 22 days before he was fired. Now, why was Kinnebrook fired? He had made a mistake and what was the mistake? His work was to observe the movement of a star from one point to the other. Now, he had a mis made a mistake in that and his boss who was a very famous astronomer of the time was really, really angry and what was the mistake? His mistake was to uh, correct his mistake, he did not correct it and that is why even though uh, Kinnebrook was a very sincere individual, he had to be forced asked to leave. So, he was fired. 20 years later, Wilhelm Bessel, another German astronomer who was interested in errors of measurement suspected that there was something wrong and Kinnebrook had not intentionally made that mistake. So, he started studying individual differences in astronomical calculations and that was important because several uh, astronomers were having uh, different uh, kinds of uh, reportings done. So, uh, Bell Bessel thought that this one of the reasons for that was the individual differences. It is not intentional, it was a difference that was because of some processes, some changes in the brain and he termed these as personal differences among people over which they had no control. Now, Kinnebrook after being fired happened to be a teacher in a school and he did not uh, realize that his uh, life's uh, his uh, work would have such an influence on psychology. Bessel showed that um, his the, uh, the role of the human uh, observer actually uh, is important. So, when we are uh, discussing or when we are talking about astronomical science. Now, this brought about the study of human sense organs and those physiological mechanisms through which we receive information about our world. It is important to understand the psychological processes of sensing and perceiving. I was just talking about sensations and uh, perceptions earlier on. Uh, 
So, this uh, is the first time uh, that we are actually getting into the core physiology of sensation and perception. So, now physiology as you can see is now gradually becoming experimentally oriented and this discipline during the 1830s primarily under the influence of uh, Johannes Muller uh, advocated the use of experimental method. So, now initially the mapping of the brain started from mapping from the inside and what they would do is that there were uh, people who used the method of extrication where they removed one part of the brain to see how it was uh, being uh, influencing the actions on the um, organism. So, it started with pigeons and um, other animals. So, Marshall Hall worked on reflex behavior, Pierre Flore concluded that the cerebrum he worked on pigeons and he uh, removed each uh, small parts of the brain and he saw that the cerebrum controls higher mental processes, parts of the midbrain controls visual and auditory reflexes and the cerebellum controls coordination, medulla is re responsible for heartbeat, respiration and other vital func functions. If you are a student of physiology or if you are a student who has an interest in the brain sciences, you will realize that this is still believed today. So, uh, think about this that during the early uh, 1800, 1800s, they were already talking about such advancements to understand the uh, importance of brain in several of the human functions. So, Next came in Broca and Broca's role is irreparable or I should say it is uh, it cannot be challenged in physiology as well as psychology and um, Broca uh, performed an autopsy on a man who had for many years had been unable to speak properly intelli intelligibly. So, he could not be understood by others and after his death when Broca uh, did an autopsy he realized that there was a lesion or an injury in the third frontal uh, convolution of the left hemisphere or I should be very uh, to simply put on the cerebral cortex. So, this area became known as Broca's center or the uh, speech center of the brain. So, Broca's area or the speech center of the brain uh, is very important um, an area that actually affects uh, how we speak. So, there were of course, other areas that were tapped later on uh, one of them majorly known as Warnick's area, but Broca's area is a, uh, has led to a lot of work being done on uh, how human beings understand language, how human beings speak. And if there is a damage between the association areas between Broca's area and other areas like the Wernick a Wernick's area, then how language is affected. So, actually we get to see that uh, these have a major role in psychology later on. So, people who are uh, students of psychology attending this course, you will know this very well that when we are talking of language and memory, how important Broca is. Now, uh, we have we were talking of mapping from the inside which use a, used um, a lot of techniques that could be uh, actually unacceptable uh, to ethical under ethical constraints and would be under ethical constraints. So, uh, this developed mapping from the outside. So, uh, Franz uh, Joseph Gaul uh, was one of the famous physiologists during this time who dissected the brains of deceased animals and humans. So, to extricate one part of the brain or to paralyze one part of the brain and see its influence on others uh, could be a little uh, unethical considering uh, scientific standards. So, that way um, so there were the dissections were now being conduct conducted on deceased human beings and animals. And Gaul found out that a mental characteristic primarily conscientiousness, benevolence and self esteem when well developed would correspond to a protrusion or a bulge on the skull. And uh, in the if the ability was weak there would be an indentation in the skull. Now, Gaul mapped 
35 attributes and this research was uh, really uh, made created havoc in society. And um, similarly during the same time uh, Santiago Ramon found out that nerve impulses could be uh, created electrical stimulation. So, uh, just imagine how uh, the brain sciences were developing during this time. And um, you know one of the uh, very interesting um, parts that uh, the, uh, the, as I said that it created Gall's study created havoc in society is uh, because there were um, uh, people were going to measure their skull and to see uh, whether uh, they were good in uh, how whether they were uh, they had st strong characteristics in mental processes or uh, they were weak in certain areas. This theory later on was um, contradicted and uh, by several other researchers especially the uh, specific um, local uh, localizations considering the human attributes, but this uh, formed a major um, uh, for path in the study of physiology or in the in the science of physiology because it was bringing forward several other concepts that could be included in uh, physiology. So, he was talking about mental characteristics or psychological principles of conscientiousness, benevolence and self esteem and very soon we would see that psychology when developed as a science uh, by in, in its own standards it would actually take up these uh, very factors and would try to do experiments on them to identify whether which specific areas could be tapped to tapped at. Now, uh, during this period during the 1840s another movement was taking place that was the mechanistic spirit. Now, we uh, the mechanistic spirit involved uh, primarily all the physicists who were also interested in uh, the physiological principles and their associate their major uh, relationship uh, was to their major focus was to find a relationship between physiology and physics. So, they said they established the Berlin Physical Society and they were generally uh, students of Miller who formed this society and felt that um, all uh, phenomena uh, has to be connected. They believe that all phenomena that is scientifically experiment can be experimentally verifiable is connected to physics. So, the 19th century physiology and 19th century physics was really focusing on materialism, mechanism, empiricism, experimentation and measurement. And the next step for this was to apply this experimental method that constituted of all these factors on the mind itself. So, as you can well understand the development of psychology is from the early uh, understanding of philosophy during uh, Aristotle and Plato to uh, a mind uh, to the understanding of the mind and now it would develop into the understanding of human behavior. And so, that brought about the beginnings of experimental psychology. This is something that we will study in our next lecture and um, thereafter we will also study some of the early experiments and uh, please stay tuned and uh, look forward looking forward to having more sessions with you. Thank you.